Welcome to this Jamda video presentation. My name is Marta Mia Rons and I work at the pharmacy department of Matero Hospital in Barcelona, Spain. I'm the first author of the manuscript published in the September issue of Jamda entitled Pathophysiology of Oropharyngeal Dysphagia Assessed by Video Fluoroscopy in Patients with Dementia Taking Antipsychotics, which I will discuss during this presentation. Dysphagia, or swallowing difficulty, is common in patients with advanced dementia. It can be caused by behavioural or sensory impairments or problems with coordination, posture, level of consciousness and motor function, or a combination of the above. Oropharyngeal dysphagia is one of the most frequent causes of aspiration, and aspiration pneumonia is a common cause of death in people with dementia in advanced stages. This study characterized the biomechanics of swallowing function using video fluoroscopy in older patients with dementia and compared it in patients taking and not taking antipsychotics. The reported prevalence of dysphagia in persons with dis dementia ranges from 13% to 84%. Oropharyngeal dysphagia has recently been recognized as a major geriatric syndrome due to its high prevalence of multiple complications, risk factors and precipitating diseases in older people. Cognitive impairment or dementia is also recognized as a geriatric syndrome and has been identified as a risk factor for aspiration pneumonia. In addition, given that approximately 50% of older people take more than four drugs and that patients with dementia are usually older people, they are likely to take drugs that induce swallowing impairment. Among them, antipsychotics are frequently associated with the prevalence of swallowing disorders. We performed a cross-sectional study of hospital inpatients aged 75 years or older who had dementia and had a positive video fluoroscopic study performed after discharge. Positive was defined as presence of signs of impaired efficacy and or safety of swallow as shown in the pictures on the right. Video fluoroscopic findings of patients with dementia were compared with patients without dementia. Older inpatients diagnosed with oropharyngeal dysphagia were confirmed with video fluoroscopy during their hospitalization. We included 114 consecutive patients with dementia and 29 without dementia. We found a prevalence of 74.6% of impaired safety of swallow in patients with dementia, higher than the 44.8% in patients without dementia. Impaired efficacy was 87.8% in patients with dementia and 86.2% in patients without dementia. In Figure 1, we see that time to laryngeal vestibule closure was also higher in patients with dementia in comparison with patients without. Therefore, patients with dementia presented a more severe impairment in airway protection mechanisms, the penetration aspiration scale and laryngeal vestibule closure delay, than patients without dementia. 34% of our patients with dementia were taking antipsychotics, most of which were atypical. Treatment with these drugs did not increase the degree of swallowing impairment. As shown in figure 2, time to laryngeal vestibule closure was similar between patients with dementia taking antipsychotics and those not, and there were no differences in swallowing safety measured by the penetration aspiration scale or efficacy as measured by oral and or pharyngeal residue. As shown in figure 3, we used rock curves to detect the optimal cutoff value of time to laryngeal vestibule closure to predict unsafe swallow in patients with and without dementia during 5 ml nectar bolus swallows. We found that a cutoff time greater than or equal to 0.34 seconds predicted unsafe swallow. In conclusion, we demonstrated that persons with dementia who have clinical signs of oropharyngeal dysphagia present a high prevalence of video fluoroscopic signs of impaired safety and efficacy of swallow. 
This indicates a need to focus preventative efforts on these individuals in order to prevent dysphagia. Finally, in our study, the use of antipsychotics was found not to contribute to swallowing impairment in patients with dementia and oropharyngeal dysphagia. This implies that clinical practice should implement specific protocols to prevent oropharyngeal dysphagia and its complications in patients with dementia. Thank you for listening. For further details, please refer to the article in the September issue of JAMDA, the Journal of the Society for Post-Acute and Long-Term Care Medicine, which is available in jamda.com.